wonderful to be able to get nova and those things i'm not sure how wonderful it is because we had much more access to other sides of things we get it's very safe programming you know the round pearl harbor day and i mean in the chris or the helena people had all their programming i think maybe you had some stuff and we had two programs prime time and friday night commemorating the war for four hours and that was it you know nothing no other alternative viewpoint other than i mean the blurbs were about glorifying and commemorating and all this and this is disturbing don't watch the lawrence welk show and that's apparently the number one show on pbs lawrence welk so then again, on, on the other hand, I remember when KUED was in Missoula, and, and um, they would also edit nudity and language. Mm -hmm. I didn't get it. I don't remember KUED in Were Missoula. They? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, they yeah. were. It was here. Before we yeah, had KSPS. It was, KSPS, it was yeah. KSPS, then KUED, then KSPS. Oh, it was that short time. Yeah, yeah, there was, yeah. But don't both KUED and KSPS had production funds, too, for independent producers. KQED, excuse me. Yeah. Oh no, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, in other words, that's it, that. Uh, I mean, I think that when uh, when you know, well, Bozeman now and and uh, Missoula in the future, you know, needs to you know be thinking about building that you know, independent production fund into the budget. You know, uh, now, not you know, that's why I took exception to this. Uh, letter from Marilyn Wessel, uh, you know, of January saying, well, I mean, it's always so vague, you know, I mean, it's, uh, you know, in terms of what the outside world participation is going to be, when the statewide system, you know, sorry, anyway, I don't mean to beat that bag of bones, but, um, um, uh, I mean, what, what about, what about independent producers being on the air now, raising our, you know, as, as, as a public television goes out there and is raising, you know, money as they do, you know, well, you know, picking up the phone and all that stuff, and uh, uh, that independent producers are on there helping raise the money and helping raise the money for themselves and having some independent, you know, I mean, I, I, I think the system has got to build uh, a lot of leeway in there, and and uh, and not only the money but the time, you know, I never could. I, I mean, I'm glad you responded to that idea of like the post you know public tv always you know or like keci used to you know 11 o'clock time to shut her down you know and uh, let it go I, know, I, let I it think go. that's an excellent you idea know. well you know the congress re recognizes that independents are part of the answer to re <laughs> engaging public television as a real public television ent entity because they've just started that independent television yeah. service mm -hmm. fund and this year they have $8 million. And they ask on the form, instead of the form being, you know, one inch, two inch, or beta, it's eight millimeter, um, SVHS. You know, I mean, they're willing to look at that innovative programming these days, local programming is being done on new formats. It's not being done on, you know, that they can no longer set that up, as McCarthy mentioned, kind of a gate to say, oh, you know, it's just not the right format. We're not even going to look at it. That now we, we have to look at media is in a different set of hands these days. Well, th and that is, I mean, that's good, because that's another point about this technical bit. When you talk about the engineers, you know, I mean, and, and uh, um, I mean, that is something to watch out for, because they say, oh, well, you know, the signal is a little bit, uh, stuff like that, and I think that, I mean, that's some relearning that's going to have to go on in Montana in terms of the institution, so that, that they're going well, to get some stuff yeah. that is not, you know. Dave. Dave today said, I mean, he brought that up, and he said that they would be open to all sorts of formats. I mean, from his perspective. Mm -hmm. Again, that's not in writing. It mm -hmm. needs to be, you know, all worked out. But, you know, I, I think Confucius said it best yeah. when he said, a picture is worth a thousand words, yeah. even if it's on Super VHS. Right. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you foresee that maybe there, um, I mean, could we, like, to start something that, that holds someone accountable in this? Forge some sort of Gus. mandate that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, like in Bozeman, you know, that um, you know, some sort of mandate that this has, some things have to happen in this way, other than God, they don't do that, you know. Absolutely, I mean, I, mean, I think it has to be in writing yeah. soon. I mean, just as part of a, you know, a structure, just as so it's something we can look at in black yeah. and white and say, well, what about this? All of us and say, because it yes. seems like the 
is you know i mean how can you be a watchdog i just have i mean all the stuff i you know people will call me and say god can you believe they you know did this to masterpiece theater last night like write it down and you know but that's just catch as catch can and i think what else goes on because i don't watch it very much because i get too pissed off you know and i don't subscribe so i don't get the guide i have to go borrow it there should be a real research thing with that but um is there going to be anything like a statewide uh committee of the whole to have some input to the public television station i mean you you'll have the bb tv and the flathead valley community college and maybe other low power TV stations around the state, each with their own board of review, so to speak, are they going to, to There there is now a Montana Public Television Association that has representation from NCAT. Uh, we have representation from all of the low power television stations. Uh, we have representation from independent producers. <coughs> I think the thing that we're missing, uh, particularly in terms of the problem I pointed out earlier that uh, there's only 22 million dollars a year available for equipment from PFTP or whatever I always have I always think of toilet paper but <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, it's not adequate to, to uh, th there isn't a big enough pie and we need to band together with public radio when we just need to have a Montana Public Broadcasters Association I think I think that when you take in everything from the uh, Al Zeta translator of KEMC to uh, the Last Chance Public Radio to uh, the Whitefish translator, the people that have come together to put up these public telecommunications facilities, and that $22 million also has to service public radio in addition. It's just a woefully inadequate amount of money uh, to deal with the problem, and we have a senator who is staked his future, I think, on telecommunications. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, we have to, the, the, f the number one priority from my perspective is bringing these people together. And if Mary wants to be the host, I've talked to Dave, somehow uh, bring people together from around the state and form that sort of an association. Uh, I think the number one priority is to get the message out that there's going to have to be a larger appropriation. Whether it's cutting the money that we're spending to test the safety of nuclear weapons, we're spending $60 million to test warheads in Nevada this year, uh, that would be a welcome addition to the public telecommunications budget. Whether it's finally cutting Gwen out, uh, which we're spending uh, a considerable amount of money nationally to continue to study the implementation of that system, we could put that into public telecommunications. There are any number of places you could cut money and put it, transfer it to this function. But the thing that people in Montana have to say, and I think if that's what McCarthy was saying, they have to ex make it clear to the senator and his staff that this is going to cost money. That we can. BVTV survives on the basis of the money that our underwriters provide us to pay the rent and the utilities and the switching and our membership. But what makes it go are the volunteers. We have an incredible, as a community, we have an incredible sweat equity investment in that station. If you, if you, can, if you value that time, it's at least worth five to $6,000 a month. We've been making that investment for four years now. It's far greater than the equipment. It's the human investment, the human capital that we've got tied up. And that goes on, I think, I've been, I, I like uh, uh, when the 25th anniversary of KUFM came about, you know, and I looked back over the investment that the people of Western Montana have made in that, uh, in the fundraising, in the, the volunteer programming, everything that's gone on. That's got to be worth something that's got to be recognized. And so that, to me, forming an association delivering the message that's going to take more money are two real key things. Working on, uh, uh, I, I don't think you can leave it up to the university or to MSU to create an independent producers fund. I think that, that, that I think you have to, you have to bring in the Arts Council, you have to bring in the Office of Public Instruction. Mm, 
that all of those that all of those right constituencies there, that have an interest in stimulating that. <coughs> yeah, but I, I will say that that was not true uh, when. Um, just being yeah. very specific, I mean, sure, the, all of those uh, it, those particular yeah. venues are important. But uh, when we first started kind of knocking on KUED's door down in Salt Lake City, which was, uh, you know, actually it was <coughs> MQTV, and we said, well, look, you guys, you guys collect a lot of money from Montana, How, you know, cutting some of that loose for, you know, independent productions. They, they they said yes on the same day that we asked because they recognize so I don't I, I, I don't think it, no I don't think it's uh, unfair or inappropriate or or to say to uh, Montana Public Television um, together uh, you people and we people will make you know and with all help from Arts Council and Humanities and whatever but that out of these monies that you're going to be raising there will be a percentage set aside for independent production because KUED did it, and I don't see why we shouldn't do the same thing. They helped us, and we can help ourselves. Um, uh, speaking about the money and, and this limited amount of appropriation for equipment, though, I was serious about that in terms of, and I think you knew this, about uh, our delegation, where you write the language in an appropriations bill that says if there's a $22 million pie to be given out for hardware, that X percentage goes first to, the, you don't name Montana or Wyoming, but X percentage goes first to those areas of the country that do not have fully developed public television systems so that legislatively we cut ourselves a bigger piece of the pie um, uh, to begin with without having to worry mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, defunding, uh, you know, uh, Gwen or a missile, if you mm. follow me. Uh, I mean, that gets done with other, <coughs> when another state wants something, and then they say, you know how they design a piece of legislation that doesn't name GM and Chrysler, mm -hmm. but winds up being written so narrowly that that's who it's really designed to help. They're the ones that wind up with the booty. The same way it could be done this way. I mean, I mean that gets into our well, it, 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 it can be done, but I think that the oper some of these other things are so ridiculous. In my opinion, and this this is such a clear oh, yeah. need well, that uh, uh, and give, given the history that, that that that's an immediate thing to do. Well, the other when, when you look at the the whole system of public uh, broadcast relying on that small amount of money, it just needs to be highlighted. I mean, the mm -hmm. people are having to go in that uh, have equipment that's eight, twelve, fourteen years old, mm -hmm. and ask for. And they're they're normally not getting they're getting a fifty fifty or sometimes they're only getting uh, a one one dollar for putting up three dollars mm -hmm. to replace their transmitters. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's nationally it's ridiculous to be worrying about laying fiber optic when we're not paying for this part of it to begin with because it's this part of it that will produce the information and the and this is what nurtures the skills that allows you to use a fiber optic system. You, we, we, we couldn't as a, uh, we don't have educators that know anything about this in our state. Minnesota, there's probably a half a dozen states where there's really a, a viable distance learning system working, where educators know how to use this technology. And we have a, a, a long ways to go just in terms of developing the human capability to use this technology. The and that's what's so exciting about something like him. Yeah. The other book that uh, you mentioned, the Spanish uh, political writer and philosopher Ortega y Gasset, and uh, the book that I remember uh, that he wrote was uh, The Revolt of the Masses, you know. Um, uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, don't we, isn't there another problem here um, in terms of our low power situation and our cable systems that I've been trying to uh, piece out, and that is to say, some of the cable systems in the state are still fairly limited in, uh, you know, their channel capacity. So that uh, if you if, if you got a community that wants a public access channel reserved, and or they've got a low power uh, operating on there already, and then uh, Montana Public Television wants to come along and wants to get on the system there. Again, you've got. I just want to bring that up. Not that there's any mm -hmm. resolution, but again, those are political questions, and it means leaning on the cable industry to say, well, um, you know, you got to upgrade your system there in uh, in Pablo, or you got to upgrade in Billings.
to accommodate all these diverse public interests, whether it's mm -hmm. Montana Public Television and Access and whatever. It's just another, to me, very important piece, though, of the of the communications pie yeah. that everybody has to be aware of. Mo there you know, are, whether there, that's there are new technologies mm -hmm. that are essentially overcoming those those limiting factors. Um, um, you split so the screen, <laughs> <laughs> more or less, before it gets there. Um, but, but the signal compression mm -hmm. is is on is you know a virtual reality at this point. But also, I think we what we saw in in Missoula. Uh, where TCI has a 5% limit uh, to inc uh, as, as a yearly increase on their fees. Um, we committed them to uh, a rebuild, and lo and behold, what shows up on the bill but a 5% increase plus a dollar for the rebuild, right? So, um, yeah, the cable companies will do whatever you, you ask them to do. They just pass it right through well, and, uh, it's, it's and, 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 and circumvent the law in that way. Well, uh, I'd like to. Would you spell that out again, please? They yes. that yes. I mean, yes. I know the point about they were required to rebuild the Missoula system yes. as part of their franchise yes. agreement, right? Yes. Okay, and that was estimated at that time around nine million dollars. It was six and a half. All right, six and a half. And now, and now they've done their rebuild. Right. They spent about seven and a half million dollars, according to, to them. Yes. And uh, they had they they increased their fees. 5%, which they are allowed by law, right. but in addition to that, they put on a $1 Surcharge. rebuild fee, yes, mm -hmm. which as far as I know will last forever. Yeah. Wait, this, is, 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 when did this month? come about? Yes. Did this it came in January. I should read my cable bill more closely. January. Mm -hmm. Do read your cable bill because <laughs> I think it's illegal. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, uh, that, I had to hear that again. I'm astonished, but I shouldn't be. Does the fiber optics stuff that you're talking about and Burns is talking about and all that, do, I don't know whether I'm supposed to be for it or against it. <laughs> <laughs> what, you mean which is politically uh, correct? Yeah, you can want to be politically correct, you know, but I, I can see dangers to it as far as cable access goes, I, um, but I, I like the idea of uh, everybody having their own link, link up with everything. I guess it comes in with the whole thing about uh, telephones being able to carry, that's to carry the signals mm -hmm. rather than cable companies. Uh, you have to understand that, that Conrad Burns um, is in favor of telco entry and as a way of justifying that position, waves fiber optics around. Um, but when you talk to him, you find out he doesn't have the vaguest notion what fiber optics are, but he does know what the telephone company is. Um, so I, I'm quite suspicious um, uh, of, of his bill because he doesn't understand it. So, um, you know, and I've talked to him about it, and uh, it, it, it's sort of a bizarre conversation. He's interested in telco entry, which does carry with it some, some uh, a whole change in the rules that we don't understand and nobody's ready for. I, don't, I think fiber optics is benign. Right. I mean, that's great. Mm -hmm. We need fiber optics, but I don't think necessarily the telephone company has to install them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, well, the best article I've seen, I, and I can't remember, it was the successor to the uh, Whole Earth Catalog, and there was a there's a regular commentator there on telecommunications at the end of that magazine, and I can't remember the name of them. Great. Uh, <laughs> But the, the metaphor is a choice between superhighways is in our interstate st system and railroads. Uh, do we want information superhighways or do we want railroads? Uh, and that has to do with ownership in one sense because the railroads, of course, were developed with a, a grant of a subsidy. The superhighways were done with, uh, were publicly built with subsidies. But, uh, and they're publicly owned, uh, and I think that that's the one of the issues about fiber optics that uh, is important. And I think that the is the Burns Gore bill. It's Albert Gore that's the co-sponsor. Uh, this has to do partly with linking all of our research facilities and all of the universities with fiber optics, and who who will do that? And the government is going to own a major part of that system. How it finally gets down to Missoula or in 
my concern to Hamilton and Darby. Uh, that's left up to uh, the telephone companies to provide that link from the trunk lines to these communities. The, my, it's my doubt, and, and there are other people that agree with this, that the, the telephone company will ever s service a community as small as Darby or Bonner or Sealy Lake or those kinds of places. Because m I feel that there's a need for enabling legislation similar to the same thing we have like for sewer districts or uh, special in, a special improvement districts so that people in Darby, if they want to have that service, can tax themselves and own it or in Hamilton or in, in Ravalli County or if here in this county so that you could own that. Well, see, my, and, and yeah. another concern in that, in that same area is that if, in fact, it's the telephone company that's dropping off the main trunks mm -hmm. traveling the country, um, uh, they do not fall under the 1984 Cable Act. Mm -hmm. Suddenly nobody is required to franchise them. There is mm -hmm. no public access uh, built into telephone company mm -hmm. delivery of signal. Um, there is no, as in the Burns Bill, as I understand it, there's no regulation for uh, program origination mm -hmm. uh, by the telephone company. And so, um, you know, we, here we are beating our heads against the wall with a, a, a huge corporation like PCI, and that's small potatoes mm -hmm. compared to what's coming down the pike in the Burns Bill. And um, so I think there is something to be concerned about. I'm, I'm going to interrupt here just for a second just to... Um, we're going to stop the recording. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, we're going to be ra wrapping up the cable casting for this evening, too, in a little while. So I want to thank everybody, and especially, I guess, I'm <laughs> willing to pull up a chair here and have this yeah, discussion. Yeah. Really, we really appreciate that. Yeah. And um, thank you all for coming. Please stay. Please stay as long as you like. Thank you. Thank you.